Base to Unit 1. Come in, Unit 1. It's an emergency. Over. Roger, Unit 1. Describe the emergency. Over. <laughs> the police car's being overrun by kids. Over. <laughs> the policeman and his wife, who was also a police officer, loved coming to Millie and Molly's school. <laughs> For a long time, they've been hoping to have children of their own. Hmm? Oh, wait a sec. Has anyone seen my... What are these for, Mr Policeman? Uh, everyone, do you remember when I took the cat thief to the police station to arrest him? Uh -huh. I put handcuffs on him. Like this? <laughs> Humphrey! Yes, like that. Could you pass me the keys? Ah, uh, no. They're back at the police station. Oh, looks like we're taking you to the police station, Humphrey. Are you arresting me? Oh, not this time, no. No matter That's what, your... the two police officers always remained calm. Until one day... Excuse me, girls. Got to get to the police station. Maybe they're training for an emergency. I wonder if it's a real emergency. Maybe there's been a robbery or an accident. Attention, attention, please. Attention, all town citizens. Can I please have your urgent, immediate and full attention? I have a very important announcement to make. I'm going to be a father. <laughs> A few weeks later, Millie and Molly still hadn't decided on a present. Miss Blythe is making the baby a patchwork quilt and the ferryman is carving a toy boat. Aunt Maud's knitting gave Millie an idea. We can knit baby booties. Maybe Aunt Maud has a pattern. You, Oscar. Excuse me, Aunt Maud. Can't you girls see I'm far too busy knitting baby booties to be interrupted? It'll be spring before we know it. Now we'll have to think of something else. As summer rolled into winter, the policeman was also trying to solve a tricky problem. So the mat from your front door is the only thing that's missing. He had to think of the right name for the baby. Right. He was certain they were having a baby boy. Matt. His family always had baby boys. Matt. Matthew. Matt. <laughs> Keep going. You're nearly there. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful you don't wreck my kite. Uh, here you are, Humphrey. Thanks. We can make the baby a kite. Yeah, a little tiny baby kite. Base to Unit 1, come in. Unit 1 to base? Is it urgent? Over. Yes, it is urgent. Let's call the baby Matt. Hmm, sounds a bit too dusty. Over and out. Stupid kite, fly! If Humphrey can't fly a kite, how could a little baby? Oh. Um, then what about a teddy? Molly, did you say teddy? Uh, yes. Um, it's a really nice boy's name. <laughs> Unit one to base. Let's call the baby Teddy. Over. Teddy? Sounds too furry. A teddy. Is it a lot of money? Well, you'll have to save up. A lot. We can do it. We've got weeks and weeks till he's born. Springtime came very quickly, and still the police officers didn't have a name for the baby. Chuck? Nah. Eugene? Nah. Humphrey? Definitely not. Come in, Unit 1. Ooh. Baby is on his way. What's your exact location? Over. I'm parked in Albert Street. Over. Albert? Roger. Albert Roger. Hey, that's a good name. Yes, it is. But there's something a little more urgent. Oh. Out of my way! It's an emergency! An accident? A robbery? No. Baby Albert Rogers on his way. Already? Money to buy the big 
present, but we've only saved enough pocket money for this little truck. But they had a little girl. Didn't you hear? A little girl? I liked toy trucks when I was a little girl, but what if she's the same as me? I didn't like toy trucks. Not even yellow stripy toy trucks. So poor Millie and Molly still didn't have a present. <coughs> and the baby was well and truly here. When the wind blows, the cradle will fall. Down will come baby. Millie and Molly thought they might find a present for the baby girl amongst their own toys. No. No. Dolly, would you like to live with the new baby? No way! The two police officers were very happy to be parents at last. And very tired. I've made a big lasagna for the new police parents. Can you take it over for them? What? Now? Yes, right now. But, Mum! It's okay. Molly can go with you. The girls really didn't want to go to the police station without their own present to give. I know. I can go home and get Dolly and wrap her up. You could give Dolly away? Yes. No. Hello, girls. Got a present there for the baby, have you? No, it's a lasagna from my mum. <laughs> Looks like everyone in town's given the policeman's baby a lovely present. <sighs> There's such a lot of kind folk around here. So we're going to be the only ones who don't give the baby a present. They'll think we don't even care. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit of a mess, but uh, Sweet Pea keeps us pretty busy. Sweet Pea? Still haven't got a name for her, have we, Sweet Pea? Um, where should I put this lasagna? Just over there somewhere. Maybe on the table? I'll just need a few of these presents. Oh, sorry. Sorry we haven't got a... <sighs> Don't know how your mum can sleep through this. Oh, but she's exhausted. I think I'll take you for a walk, sweet pea. She loves the pram. Um, Mr. Policeman. Yes? It's still in your pyjamas. <laughs> I'm that tired I haven't even noticed. We could take sweet pea for a walk for you while you have a sleep. To Millie and Molly's surprise, sweet pea fell fast asleep after just a few moments. Millie, Molly, wait. Can you? Shh, Aunt Maud, you'll wake the baby. I've just Bring flowers for the new mother and wrap the booties. Could you take them to her, please? I think Mr. Policeman's still asleep. <laughs> and so is Mrs. Policewoman. So what do we do? We can't just leave Sweet Pea here by herself. I think I know what we can do. Molly's plan kept them busy all afternoon. Tidying up, doing dishes, folding washing, getting dinner ready. Until all that was left to do was to put the spring flowers in a vase. There's so many flowers, I can't fit them all in. I know what to do with them. <gasps> Dreaming? How did all this happen? We just tidied up a bit. We stacked all the presents over there. And there's a present from Aunt Maud. And these flowers too. Sorry, we haven't got a present for Sweet Pea. But you've given us the best, kindest present of all. We have. All this help you've given us. And you know, that's the best sleep I've had in two weeks. Oh, and you got Sweet Pea to sleep. Oh, look, she's still asleep. Oh, how sweet does she look with those flowers in her hair? Let's see. Oh, that's it. Daisy Rose. Not Albertina Rogerilla. <laughs> Daisy Rose. Yes, it's a beautiful name for our beautiful girl. It's getting dark. You should drive Millie and Molly home. Oh, 
And when you get back, you've got lots of phone calls to make. Who to? <laughs> Only to everyone in town to thank them for all the presents. As the policeman drove the girls home, Millie had another idea for a gift they could give by helping out. Attention, attention, please. Our police force wants to thank everyone in town for all the lovely presents. We certainly do. Baby Daisy Rose would like to thank you too. <laughs> <laughs> One lovely day, Millie and Molly were in the park playing hide-and-seek when they saw their classmate, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Nice pony. Prince, isn't it? Hi, Millie. Yes, his name's Prince. <laughs> nice Prince. Nice boy. Wanna pat him, Molly? I'm not sure. Does he bite? Of course not. Just be gentle. Boy. Molly, you should never scream around ponies. Don't you know that? Sorry. Come and visit Prince one day, Millie. Okay. Let's play hide and seek, Millie. You're it. Okay. <laughs> While Millie counted, Molly saw the perfect hiding spot. But she wasn't the only one who thought it was a good place to hide. Hey, little cat. What are you doing under here? Ready or not? <gasps> You're hurt! Poor thing! The girls wasted no time getting the injured cat to the vet. She was probably hit by a car. She's lucky, really. It could have been much worse. Will she get better soon? Hmm, she should be walking again in a week, if she gets the proper care. What will happen to her now? Well, she has no name tag. So tomorrow she'll have to go to the pound for stray cats. The pound? Oh, Molly, you're a softie. We can't possibly have all the town's stray cats living in this small flat. There'll be no room left for us. But, Dad, she's only one little cat, and she can't go to the pound while she's sick. The vet said she needs lots of care and attention. Please! Please. Well, you can keep her till she's better, okay? <gasps> Thanks, Dad. There. Food, milk and a soft, comfy bed. What do we call her, Millie? She's got a black coat as black as the inside of a chimney. <laughs> How about Sooty? Sooty. <laughs> she seems to like it. <laughs> nice, Sooty. Good girl. I'm so glad we saved her from the pound, Millie. Yeah, but only for a week. So we have to find her owner before then. Mm -hmm. Tomcat, come and meet Sooty. She's your new friend, and I want you to be really nice to her. I think they like each other. Tomcat, be a good boy. Despite Tomcat's strange behaviour, the girls needed to concentrate on finding Sooty's owner. So they put up posters all around town. Molly even showed a poster to her class. She's cute and black coloured like this picture. Millie and I have to find her owner before a week's up. So please ask everybody you know if they've lost a cat. Thank you, Molly. She looks like a bonny wee cat. OK, class. It's free reading time, so everyone choose a book to share with a friend. Yeah. 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 Millie and Molly loved free reading time because they could read their favourite book together. Got it, Millie. Beetlejuice. So Molly was surprised to see that Millie was already reading a book with Chloe. This one is Piebald and this one is Brindle. What's this book? It's Chloe's book about horses and ponies. And this one is brown, just like Prince. Hmm. What kind of pony is that? It's not a pony, Molly. It's a donkey. E -R -E -R. <laughs> Molly tried to join in, but it felt like Chloe only wanted to be with Millie. So she decided to read by herself. But Millie still did things with Molly. That afternoon, the two girls went to look after Sooty as usual. But they found someone else in Sooty's bed. <gasps> Did Tomcat take 
take your bed and make you sleep under there? Mm. Poor Sooty. What's wrong with Tomcat? Doesn't he know Sooty's sick? Look, Molly. She's walking. She's starting to get better. Good girl, Sooty. But we haven't found her owner yet. But what else can we do? What if she doesn't have an owner? Then she'll have to go to the pound for sure. Will it be? Yeah, I hope so. Millie, Millie, want to learn a new clapping game? Uh, okay. A little playmate, come and play with me. And bring your dolly three. Climb up my apple tree. Slide down my slippery slide in my car door. And we'll be jolly friends forever more, 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 more. A big clap for Millie and Chloe. Well done. Molly tried hard to smile, but she couldn't help wondering why Chloe was being so friendly to Millie. Millie was supposed to be Molly's best friend. And Al, and Poppy, and Tom and Jack, and Millie. And that's all. What is it? It's an invitation to Chloe's birthday party on Saturday. It's a pony riding party. Wow! Didn't she give you one, Molly? Uh -uh. Not only did Molly miss out on an invitation, she was the only girl in their class who Chloe didn't invite. Now she knew for sure that Chloe wanted her out of the way so that she could steal Millie. On the morning of the party, Molly felt hurt, left out and friendless. Hello? Hi, Molly. It's Millie. I'll come around after the party to help you look after Sooty, okay? No thanks, Millie. I can look after Sooty by myself. What's wrong with Miss Molly today? Millie and I aren't friends anymore. Not friends with Millie? How can that be? And soon, Sooty will be better and you'll have to go to the pound. Oh, Molly, don't cry. It can't be all that bad. Molly decided to cheer herself up by cooking chocolate cake. Molly's mum was at work all day. Molly's dad was practicing yoga in his brand new yoga outfit. And Tomcat... Tomcat had mischief on his mind. Oh, no! Tomcat! Gotcha now, Tomcat. You can run, but you can't hide. Oh, Look out. Sooty! Is he under here? Oh, Tomcat's left a mess under the bed. Tomcat! Right where Sooty made her new bed. He wants to go wherever Sooty goes. Why is Tomcat behaving so badly, Dad? He really isn't himself lately. Maybe he's jealous of Sooty. Do you think so? Yes. He might not understand what's happening. All he knows is that a new cat's turned up and she's getting your love and attention. Tomcat? There's no need to be jealous of Sooty. I know I'm looking after her. But I still love you. You're my own special cat, and you always will be. Silly Tomcat. <laughs> if that's true, then maybe, just maybe, Millie still loves you just as much as she did before Chloe came along. Oh no! I've been jealous just like Tomcat. Do you think I should call her? Now there's a good idea. Oh, Tomcat, that's my new yoga suit. Did you have fun at the pony party? Yeah, it was fun, but it would have been more fun if you were there. Oh, Millie, I'm sorry about before. I was really jealous of you and Chloe being friends. Well, 
Chloe is my friend, but you're my best friend, and we'll be best friends forever. <laughs> Mr. Bus Driver? Are you the ones who found the cat? It looks just like my cat. She went missing a week ago. <coughs> oh, Gertrude, it is you. You're safe. Thank goodness. Thank you. Thank you, girls, for looking after us so well. That's okay, but she really needs a name tag. Well, bye, Gertrude. We'll miss you. Bye. Thanks. And I'll get that name tag. Hooray! We found Sooty's owner. You mean Gertrude, don't you? <laughs> I think Sooty suited her much better. Well, hello, Smelly Puss. Decided to be nice now. <laughs> Millie, can you teach me that clapping rhyme you learnt from Chloe? Sure, it's easy. Oh, little playmate, come and play with me, and we'll be jolly friends forever more, 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 more. <laughs>
No. No. She's not in here. That's one of the list. Huh? Poor Dolly. Hope she's okay. This one's cute. And she needs a home. Maybe you could get to love her as much as Dolly. No. I could never love another doll as much as Dolly. I just know she's out there waiting for me. Somewhere. Dolly's lost forever, do you? Um, it's just that it's been a whole day now, so you might not find Dolly. <gasps> Thanks for staying the night. It's nice to have you and Jemima here. Maybe someone is taking really good care of Dolly. Someone who loves Dolly as much as you do. No, nobody could love Dolly as much as I do. Nobody. day, Lily and Molly asked a lot of people, everyone on the list, if they had seen Dolly. But the answer was always the same. I'm sorry, Molly, but I haven't seen your precious Dolly. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Ferryman. That's almost everyone on the list. It's been nearly two days now. You've looked everywhere. I don't think... I'll just keep looking till the end of today, okay? Then, then, I suppose I'll have to give up. Okay, there's just one more person left on the list. Aunt Maud! Do we have to? She's so snippy! At Aunt Maud's, Ella Bella Boo was getting ready to take Dolly to her new home in a faraway town. Ella Bella Boo! Where are you now? Mummy's here. Time to go. Time to go. We could go go bye bye. Goodbye. Safe journey. Oh dear. Don't oh, miss that little terror. Oh, get a grip, Maud. Strong cup of tea. That's what you need. Uh, hello, police. Sta Yes, I've got that, Aunt Maud. A missing precious china teacup. Long to your grandmother. Aunt Maud, unless you think it's been stolen, oh, I'm sorry, but it's not a police matter. No, you ask her. She's your doll. Huh? Aunt Maud? Oh, fiddlesticks! What's wrong? My teacup, my precious china teacup, and it's gone. Oh. We can help oh. you look. Oh. Molly's really good at looking for lost oh. things. Because she never gives up. Really? Um, sure I can help. But have you seen... No time for chit-chat. Got to find my precious teacup. That's the garden and the house. Search from top to bottom and no sign of it. It's hopeless. I'm never going to find my beautiful teacup. And it's nearly the end of the day, Molly, and still no sign of Dolly. And all the while, Dolly and the teacup were heading further and further away. Ah, uh, Maud, have you looked in your garden shed? Look, what is it? Dolly's body ribbon. This means Dolly was right here. Look. A teaspoon! So maybe Aunt Maud's teacup was right here too! Where? Ella Bella Boo must have been playing with it in here! And my dolly! So where is Ella Bella Boo now? Nearly a hundred miles away! One hundred miles away? Auntie Maudie! Ella, Ella Bella, Bella Boo! Boo. Oh, I forgot at the Bella Boo's stroller. Ella Bella Boo, have you got... Dolly, you're safe. Ella Bella Boo, could you please give me Dolly?
Dolly? No! We go get mine! Oh! What's that? That looks like... Oh, my precious teacup! All in one piece! Ella Bella Boo, she's my doll! I've been looking everywhere no! for her! Darling, give Molly her doll. No! Mine! Mm. Mine! Come on, Ella Bella Boo. Give the doll back now. No! Mine! Oh, uh, no, I'm running uh, so late. The furniture van will be there before us. Okay, you can keep Dolly. But you have to love her more than any other doll in the whole world. And don't let her eat too many lollies. And bring her with you when you come and visit. Mm. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Molly. Now, can you close that door and lock it? We've got to get going. Are you okay, Molly? Wait! Stop! Look, I'm sorry, but we're in a screaming hurry. This won't take a sec. I promise. Oh. Ella Bella Boo. Look. Huh? Oh! Let go! Let go! Mine! Uh. Mm. Dolly, I missed you so much. Let go! Woo! So Aunt Maud got her precious teacup back. And Molly had her precious dolly back again. Molly had never really given up hope that they would meet again. And from then on, they were never parted. Every school class has one. Even Millie and Molly's class has one. One like Humphrey. Humphrey isn't as bad as he used to be, but he can still be a tease. How did you bag it up on the roof, Millie? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> How will you do your homework now, Millie? <laughs> that Humphrey. Usually, Millie and Molly just tolerated Humphrey's mischief. Marmalade! Marmalade. But one day, Humphrey went too far. Looking for thee? Oh, no, Humphrey! Put them down! Uh, uh, didn't hurt your precious dumb cats. They're not dumb. Oh, poor Tom Cat. Did that nasty Humphrey hurt you? It's all right, Marmalade. We'll teach that Humphrey a lesson. Hmm. Yeah. Let's teach Humphrey a lesson. So Millie and Molly decided to play a trick on Humphrey. What are we waiting here for? Aunt Maud, we don't want her to see us. Well, duh, because she'll be snippy at us as always. But why are we here? We're spying on her. We think she might be... an alien from outer space. Oh, yeah, right. Ow! Ow. Hmm? Is anyone there? Don't move. Don't make a sound. No, oh, fiddle six. That was close. Aunt Maud's not an alien, but she's snippy all the time. Aliens are snippy all the time. They are. Well, if they were nice, they wouldn't want to take over the world, would they? Well, maybe. And what about her huge vegetable patch? Yes. Why does a lady who lives on her own grow so many vegetables? She can't eat them all. I don't know. To feed the army of Martians when they come. Really? And why do you think Aunt Maud's magic muffins help you do better at school when you eat them? Because they give me energy? No. They control your brain. 
Millie and Molly's trick was starting to work. Humphrey was going to look very silly. Very silly indeed. That was going to teach him a lesson. But tricks have a way of working out differently. Humphrey wanted to be absolutely sure that Aunt Maud was from another planet before he started telling other people. Right, let's see what's on TV. And those bugs will soon be attacking the plants now thriving in your garden. You'll need to Ah, uh, the gardener's son, just lot. in time. Probably your least favourite tool in the garden shed is the spray equipment, but the pump spray is the weapon of choice against these pests. Once you find your device properly, then now oh, where's that thing of mine? I know. Ah. An alien weapon. Wow. Take that and that. Ha ha. And all you have to do is line them up, and you can wipe them all out in no time. Ha. They won't know what's hit them. I'll zap them all. <laughs> The next day, Humphrey had a lot to tell the class. And Aunt Maud has this thing from outer space that'll zap us all. She's growing a trillion vegetables so she can feed all the aliens that are going to come down and take over the whole entire planet. And our town's going to be first. <laughs> Millie and Molly had repaid Humphrey for being so mean to Marmalade and Tomcat. Everyone in the whole class thought he looked silly. They'll probably learn right here in the school. Ew, and Aunt Maud will meet them and they'll probably eat all the girls first. <laughs> I saw Aunt Maud growing antennas out of her head. <laughs> Do you believe me? No, people. It's not nice to make fun of Humphrey. Besides, we should admire his wonderful imagination. It's not imagination. It's real. Aunt Maud's from outer space. <laughs> Yes. Well, you all be sorry when the aliens come. Humphrey! <laughs> Millie and Molly wondered if they'd gone too far. They didn't mean that Humphrey should be laughed at this much. But nasty tricks have a nasty way of backfiring. Millie! Hmm? Molly! Over here! What are you doing, Humphrey? Keep your voice down. We're gonna save the world. What? We? Us three are the only ones who know the truth about Aunt Maud. Nobody else believes except us. So you've got to help me. Help you do what? Capture Aunt Maud, of course, when she walks through the park. What? Yeah, then we can make her tell everyone at school about being an alien. But Humphrey... And when we save the world, we'll be heroes and eat as much ice cream as we want. No! Don't you like ice cream? Aunt Maud! The two girls knew they'd better stop Aunt Maud from going through the park. Aunt Maud! Aunt Maud! Aunt Maud! Wait! What's all this noise and rushing? You know I don't like rushing or noise. Sorry, Aunt Maud, but where are you going? You're not going through the park, are you? Well, of course I am. I always go through the park when I go shopping. Wouldn't you like to go a different way? No, I wouldn't. If Millie and Molly couldn't stop Aunt Maud, then they'd have to stop Humphrey, somehow. And don't rush about! Oh, fiddlesticks! But you mustn't capture Aunt Maud. Why not? We'll be heroes. Humphrey, Aunt Maud isn't an alien. We made that up to trick you. Yeah, because you're mean to Marmalade and Tomcat. Not an alien? Really? I should have known. I should have guessed. Aunt Maud is using her alien magic muffins from outer space to control your brains. No! I'll just have to save the world by myself. You have to believe us, Humphrey. We made it up. Yeah, she has a grow vegetables for a gardening competition. And her snippiness is just snippiness. It's nothing to do
do with her being an alien? Hmm. Then what about the thing that she's going to zap us all with? Well, um... Here she comes. <gasps> Nobody had ever seen Aunt Maud this snippy before. I'm going to take care of this immediately. I've never been so... Millie! Molly! I can't believe it. This is the most... Molly! Millie! Oh, fiddlesticks! Millie! Molly! Save me! She's gonna zap me! Hmm? What nonsense are you talking about now, boy? Please don't zap me, Aunt Maud. Zap? Please, Aunt Maud, he thinks... Yes, yes! Well? He thinks you're an alien from outer space. What? I saw your zapper. My what? He thinks he saw you last night with something and heard you tell someone you were going to zap us all. Hmm? Hmm. Yes, I did. <gasps> you did? This is it. <gasps> it's for gardening. It's a spray. It zaps all those pests that ruin my lovely prize-winning vegetables. I'm the best gardener in the whole town, you know. So you're not an alien from outer space? And you're not going to take over the world? Certainly not, Humphrey. But I will be ringing your mother and the school and possibly the police station. You can't go around dropping boxes on anyone you feel like, can you? No, Aunt Maud. It wasn't all Humphrey's fault, Aunt Maud. It was our fault too. It was a trick that went too far. I see. Millie and Molly explained everything. And all three volunteered to do some chores to make up for upsetting Aunt Maud so much. And Millie and Molly decided something else too. Sorry, Humphrey. We didn't mean for the trick to turn out so badly. We won't ever trick you ever again or anyone else. But you won't hurt our cats again, will you? Well, I'll try not to. Promise? Promise. What's all this jabbering? There's still lots of work to do, more weeding, there's compost to be moved, and the tool shed needs to be tidied. Understand? Yes, yes Aunt Maud. Maud. Now, perhaps some afternoon tea will give you enough energy. Who wants a muffin? Humphrey? Are they magic muffins? Well, they're my muffins. I made them myself. They're good for your brains. Have one. Uh, no, thank you very much, Aunt Maud. Hmm. It might take Humphrey just a little while longer to believe that Aunt Maud is not an alien. Everyone was excited when Miss Blythe announced that Millie and Molly's class was going on a field trip to the forest. And you'll collect specimens and draw pictures of birds and plants. Wow! I get to be an explorer! I can find some leaves for my collection. Get these permission notes signed and on Monday we'll all catch the ferry across the river. <laughs> it was then that Molly's enthusiasm for the field trip suddenly, mysteriously disappeared. Miss Blythe, do we all have to go on the field trip? Yes, of course. It's part of your schoolwork. Oh, um, it's just, um, I might have to do something else on Monday. And what's that? Um, just something really important. Maybe. But the next day, when it was time to hand in the permission note, Molly still hadn't found an excuse not to go on the field trip. Warm clothes and comfortable shoes. Molly! Molly, your permission note. I can't give it to you. Why not? It's... it's... the fairy. What about the fairy? It's too... too... what? Too, um... scary. <laughs> Molly's scared of the fairy. <laughs> Chloe, perhaps you'd like to stand up and share your funny joke with the whole class. But no, Miss Blythe. Right here. <gasps> so we'll see you all bright and early Monday. Poor Molly. But lucky Molly had a very clever friend, Millie. <gasps> it's all right, Molly. It's safe. You've been on the ferry before, but only when it was tied up. 
Now, lass, I promise I'll take my ferry only out a little ways, not right out into the river, until you're used to it. But I'll be right beside you all the way, Molly. Ooh. All right. So over the next couple of days, Millie sat beside Molly on the ferry. The first day, the ferryman took the ferry just a short way out into the river. The second day, the ferryman took the ferry just a little further out into the river. Here, lass, you pay attention to Boson and don't go fretting about what the ferry's doing. Yeah, give Boson a good pat. The third day was the day of the field trip. Molly hoped that she would be able to cross the river from one side to the other without being too frightened. Binoculars and a magnifying glass and a compass. It's only a day trip. Why do you need all that stuff? All aboard! Molly, are you ready for your big voyage, matey? Uh, um... Come on, Molly. Molly, take a look at how the water sparkles. No, thank you very much. Both of these padding. Go on, Molly. You can do it. The river is so beautiful. Go on, Molly. Yeah, you can it's do so it. Pretty. See, lass? We're over halfway across the river. <laughs> Good on you, lass. You're no longer a landlubber. You did it. And you were right beside me all the way, Millie. <laughs> With the ferry trip behind them, the whole class was soon exploring the forest. You know, they're a fungus. It's so pretty. And so is this leaf. Here, use my magnifying glass. I'm going to put it in my collection. Suddenly, the unexpected oh. happened. Oh. What was that? Oh. oh dear! It's alien zombie monster spaceships! It's just a bit of thunder. Oh, and some rain too. Oh dear me! Quick six people, gather round! We'll have to take shelter somewhere, but there's nowhere out here in these woods with a roof. Miss Fly, Farmer Hegarty's barn is near here. See? Oh, yes, just beyond the trees. Thank you, Millie. Soon everyone was safe, sheltering in Farmer Hegarty's barn, because they couldn't all fit in his house. We'll just stay here a wee while till the rain eases, and we can all go home. Sorry, Miss Fly. But no one's going anywhere in a hurry. Oh, no. Why ever not? The rain's so heavy, the river's flowing too fast for the ferry to cross. Wow! This is exactly what happens to real explorers. Listen. The rain's stopping. Oh, 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 oh I don't like the rain. So my mum and dad can just drive over the bridge and get me? No. The bridge upstream has collapsed from the floodwaters. We'll all have to stay the night. Right here. Come on now, everyone. A little bit of shush. Millie? Molly and I have stayed the night in the barn before. It's great fun, really. I'm sure it will be quite an adventure. I've got to go and secure the ferry. Farmer Hegarty's given me this rope. And as for Boson, Molly, keep an eye on me first, mate. He's staying the night in this barn. Right to you all. Thank you, officer. Now, people, I've just spoken to the policeman and he's telling all your families that we're staying the night. What do we sleep on? What do we eat? Oh, you'll be as snug as bugs in these rugs. Farmer Hegarty, thank you. That's grand. 
And I'm going to set up a barbecue and cook sausages. Got any dinosaur blood? Oh, dinosaur blood? Tomato sauce. I like lots and lots of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need that. It gets pretty chilly in here. Because I'm not staying the night. Storms made it very dark out. Chloe, where are you going? Chloe! I'm going home! Chloe, come back! Oh, dear. I don't know my way around here well enough to go after her. I could go after her. Oh, thank you, but no. Chloe's upset about something. It'd be better if it were me. Molly and I could come with you, Miss Blythe. We know our way around the farm. And I've got my compass. The river was wild and angry when Chloe reached its banks, and nothing like the gently flowing waters they'd crossed earlier that day. Seaman! Get back from the bank, lass! It's dangerous! The river's washing the bank away! No! It's got to take you across the river! Now! The ferry isn't going anywhere! Go back! Any closer? What's wrong? The riverbanks could collapse from all the rain. <gasps> oh, Chloe, it'll be night soon. Come back with us. No, I'm going home. Come on, Chloe. It's lovely and warm back in the barn. But Molly saw that something was frightening Chloe, just like the ferry had frightened her. Chloe. And any more rain on these banks and they'll collapse. Chloe, you don't have to be scared all by yourself. Tell me what's scaring you and it won't seem nearly so scary. Molly's right. A problem shared is a problem halved. Really? Really? Come on, last your friend's right. The next day, the river had subsided. Molly enjoyed her trip back on the ferry even more than the trip over. Nothing was too scary when you had a friend by your side and a cat on your lap. 